pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Check, check. Roll call. Chisel. Here. Bill Richard. Here. Carlson. Here. Luce. Here. Lower is absent. Rustad. Here. Johnson. Here. Okay, do we have a motion for approval of the agenda? I will motion to approve the agenda. Okay, Bill Richard made a motion for approval. Second. Supported by Carlson. Roll call. Bill Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Rustad? Aye. Chisel? Aye. The agenda has been approved. We have public comment. Uh, the first, the presentation from the Telecommunications Utility Board of Trustees, Jared Walter. You have the podium. Yeah, I don't have a formal presentation. Um, you guys have in your packet our response and recommendation uh, to the feasibility study. And uh, essentially, um, we would move forward with a not yet recommendation or response. Um, but what we mean by that is that we'd like to continue uh, investigating. Um, we don't have any specific asks uh, for financial needs at this time, so it's literally just continuing to do what we've been doing and investigating other alternatives. Um, <coughs> You guys saw the presentation from Uptown Services. Um, some specific ideas that we'd like to investigate are around, you know, they're bulleted uh, or numbered in your packet, but specifically uh, re examining the take rate. Um, one of the exhibits in your uh, packet, um, prepared by Phil Iverson with Decor Fast Fiber. Uh, it shows that if you adjust uh, the take rates uh, and play with that a little bit, it becomes a math exercise. And depending upon where we're at in Decora, um, we believe those numbers could change. Um, so one of the things we'd like to do um, going forward is a specific pledge card and with some specific asks to all of the metered residents in Decora, uh, basically a postcard coming out from the city um, and asking them would they uh, pledge to commit uh, or commit to um, taking this service if it was at a reason or similar um, price point as competitors um, so that we could get another data point. That would not be a scientific study, but it would be another data point to give us an understanding uh, comparatively to what we had from the consultant. Um, other pieces is re-examining the full-time employee count. Um, the study said that we would need 11. Um, we, we believe that maybe that could be lowered where there could be some cost savings there. Um, we had an interesting meeting with Josh Burns from Osage earlier today, uh, GM at over at Osage, and they're doing, they're a smaller community, about half the size of Decora, um, but they've got six full-time employees for telecom. And that's two office, four technicians. And they said that, um, Josh said, if we could get fiber to each home, we could probably even cut that in half. Um, just because of the, the maintenance is so much uh, more efficient with fiber. So a lot of things to, do, to look at there. Also smart uh, grid advanced metering, examining that, other video alternatives. Um, we may come to a point where maybe we don't look at offering um, video based on cost and what you know the revenues coming back um, breaking even so there's still a lot of things to examine in those areas um, areas around the last mile you know how we can look at options to not only own that but who can pay for that there might be potentials where specific residents might want to pay for the last mile themselves. So if there's specific neighborhoods where we could investigate that and phase out builds instead of doing it all at once. Um, um, you know, continuing discussions with Metronet to see what's available and possible there. Um, we would like to meet with the city's financial planner to better understand, you know, what we would need specifically in a business plan because if uh, the recommendation from Uptown was to move forward, that would have been a bondable document that we could have taken to a planner um, since that was, uh, you know, uh, somewhat of a negative response uh, in the, the study, we wouldn't want to take that <laughs> to a uh, financial planner. So we'll meet with uh, city's financial planner to learn more what we can do there. And then um, we believe there's, um, the more we talk as a group uh, and meet with other, you know, experts, other communities, that there's a lot more education that we could provide to the community to help them understand 
what this could look like for the community in, in different avenues and, and um, you know, uh, just helping them understand other ways beyond if, if we didn't offer video um, like cable TV, you know, what could we do uh, with streaming or internet TV and then helping, helping them understand what that would look like. Just more education for the community. Um, so ultimately, um, that's really kind of our response is that we'd like to continue moving th forward um, to investigate other avenues. Um, that's an ask from us uh, at the utility board. And then the other, I guess, more formal ask is we would like to begin the process of formalizing the utility board so that we can have some authority to take action if we saw fit. Um, so that's something that um, I don't, it's not an action item tonight, um, but I know we would need to speak with the legal team and Chad would do that as well. But um, whatever that takes from the city council and, and administration to make that happen, that's a very specific and um, an ask that we're in, intent on that we would like to be able to formalize um, because up until this point, we, had, we, we can't take any action. You know, we can come to you, we can ask, we can um, pontificate, <laughs> we can have great ideas and um, listen to consultants, but at the end of the day, um, we can't take any real action. And, and going forward, if there's other avenues like, um, you know, looking at neighborhoods where we might do alpha tests, those kinds of things, then that's stuff that we could do and look at phase build outs in that way too, or test, you know, what a, a build out might look like in a specific area. That doesn't mean we don't want to be a partner with the city council, of course. Um, we would keep you informed, but um, just to, to be able to do things more efficiently, I guess. Um, Beyond that, you have a couple of exhibits. Uh, again, the, I mentioned the take rate adjustment um, prepared by Phil, and then we also contracted with Smart Source Consulting for uh, essentially an audit or a review of the feasibility study. Um, in my opinion, it came back somewhat vague from recommendations, but um, I've kind of laid out where we agree is that we want want to uh, do more community-wide economic, um, you know, or outreach to, to help the community understand what the benefits would be of such a, a network, um, building a more robust business plan, and then um, potentially if, if we can gather more data back from Uptown Services, the raw data, so we can start looking at that and understanding, you know, from the survey and, and then the, you know, build out um, the costs there, full-time costs, just so we have more data for ourselves and our community that we can then we can work off going forward. So um, that's in your packet. Um, don't have really anything to present other than, as I said, we'd like to keep moving forward and we'd like to explore the process of formalizing the utility. So I'll open any questions. I have a couple of my board members here as well, uh, fellow board members. So. Any questions for Jared? When you come in about last mile, Jared, you're actually talking like if there was a trunk going through that person or that res business getting from that trunk to their establishment? Correct. Yeah, so whether it's their home or their business. So it could be shorter than a mile. Correct. <laughs> it could. That'd be great. Like, I think downtown would be much less than a mile. Yeah. And we have the Metronet there that could be a... That could be a possibility. Yeah. Possibility for mm -hmm. such. Yep. Other questions? Any concern about getting more specific data from NextGen? Uh, from uptown, uptown, yeah, uptown. They did send us the results of the phone survey, the raw data. Um, but it, uh, all we can do is ask, um, you know. And, and Chad made the comment too: is make sure we have a very specific asks, you know, so that you know we know exactly what we want from them. And the more specific we are, the better chance we have. You know, a lot of it's proprietary data, so we may not get what we want, um, but we'll get what we can. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks. Anyone else uh, like to address the council on an issue that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. Item A is the minutes of the October 2nd meeting. Item B is the claims. Item C is acceptance of the original deed and dedication of the park. Street right-of-way conveyed uh, by Decor Hotel Partners, LP, and 
Decor Properties, Inc. Uh, item D is Resolution 2834 relating to the financing and proposed project to be undertaken by the City of Decorah. Iowa establishing compliance with the reimbursement uh, bond regulations under the Internal Revenue Code. Item E is consider C3 commercial design review uh, for a cardboard robot, which is uh, 110 Winnebago Street, a sign. Item F is consider special events application for American Cancer Week, uh, relay for live uh, uh, 5K on Saturday, October 21st, uh, various streets. Item G is consider partial pay number one, 2017 Asphalt Street maintenance project in the amount of 28,809 and 18 cents. Item H is consider partial pay number two, 2017 Park Street and Short Street storm sewer and street improvements in the amount of $111,798 and 17 cents. Any questions on the consent agenda? Acceptance of the okay, motion by Luce for acceptance. Supported? Second. By Bella Richard. Roll call. Luce? Aye. Bella Richard? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Lore? Aye. Rustad? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Okay, consent agenda is approved. Item C is consider site plan uh, C3 uh, commercial design review for Viking State Bank at 321 West uh, Water Street. Uh, I think everybody has a copy of that. It's gone through PNZ. Chad, I'll just turn it over to you. And I know that uh, there are at least Rick Harris is here from the bank to answer questions. So, yep, and uh, there's a couple of PNZ members here as well. Um, this is a uh, it's a two-part application. It's a site plan uh, review application, uh, which is required for all commercial development and redevelopment. It's also a C3 commercial design review uh, because it's in the downtown C3 commercial district. Uh, it did go through planning and zoning review as well as uh, city engineering and staff review uh, over the course of the last several weeks. Um, it, because of the nature of the redevelopment in the downtown area, there are a few amenities that um, can be or need to be addressed. However, those that, that should be were um, specifically sidewalk plan, uh, very little disruption to the existing sidewalk situation, also very little um, disruption to the driveways, traffic patterns um, from the existing layout. Uh, stormwater uh, would all be collected uh, and dispensed into underground storm systems, uh, probably in a little better and more efficient capacity than it is being done today. And um, I guess there really aren't any other uh, features. Uh, just looking at the C3 design review, um, you know, that looks at architectural features, uh, material types, uh, and, and general look of the building, if you will. And I don't believe that there were really any questions there from planning and zoning as well. Um, staff doesn't note any comments there either. Uh, as a secondary review level, it did go through the Historic Preservation Commission, uh, just because they tend to uh, like to see major projects like this, especially in light of the downtown district being added to the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, they didn't uh, really have any comments either. You do have a letter from the commission in your packet. Uh, they thought generally pretty positively on the project in terms of uh, adding a little bit of uh, economic, economic vitality to the downtown area, taking a couple of old buildings and, and making them a little better. So I would ask if you have any questions on the site plan or the C3 design. <clears throat> I was curious if there had been any um, attention paid to the historic preservation's idea of I understood it was making a limestone wall or separator from sidewalk to the what looks like your planting here. We have we did we did mention that to the uh, architect and uh, he's looking at that. But uh, you know, presently, I can't tell you that it's going to be done. But we're looking at doing that. Do you see any concerns of what that both in arrows and the one going out the alley? Do you see any? Traffic 
congestion with the lane, the, you know, the drive-throughs? Yeah, you know what, the, that uh, driveway stays almost identical to what it has been for the last 20 years. It, we're moving it a little on the building, but other than that, as far as traffic patterns, we've never had an accident coming out onto the alley. Um, actually, the design will probably be a little easier because you could curb out before going straight out and having to exit down the alley. So. <coughs> That is a one-way alley. Yeah. Right. No, so I, I've parked in those parking spaces now there and just gone out on Water Street. But this is indicating that they don't want any flow out of Water Street on the north end of the parking lot. You want it to go through the drive-throughs and out the alley. Right. Yeah, but you know, probably realistically, if they come in on water and they park there and there's nobody there, they can still, they'll probably still exit. So the arrows are a suggestion, basically. Right. Thank you. Right. Well, Rick, when, uh, if, if this all goes through, and I can't see why not, uh, when would uh, construction start? Uh, we hope to uh, start demolition this fall, get footings in, and uh, build through the winter. Uh, the plan is to take about 12 months to, uh, to do. So, um, I'm a little curious with the two entrances. Is, is that is there? I guess why they seem so close to me. I'm curious as to why there are two, and if there's. You know, there were the, we bought it when we bought it. It was a subway shop. Those were the same entries that were there when we bought the bought the building. And are they needed, or we did? We did. We did spend a little time with the architect because he, he was asking for review and comments. And uh, the thing that we looked at there was the idea that we're trying not to cause congestion in the intersection with the signals. And so occasionally we, we discourage drives that are that close to the corner. Here it's difficult to get away from the corner far enough for it to make a difference. And because of the history of the parcel and not had a big accident history, we left the drive as two options, primarily because it feels as if you are not going to get a left turn in off of water with the signal from the traffic, not allowing that turn from the front of the co-op in. The signal should give you the turn left down the river, and that River Street entrance then is your second option to get into the, to the parcel if you're coming from the north. It felt like that was a better option than locking everybody into just coming from water, taking the River Street option away, and then insisting on that, you know, what's going to happen if there's always a line at the signal and you can't get, can't get your line. Okay. Any other questions? Um, is there is there anyone from the historic preservation president? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. So I'm curious. I mean, it seems odd to me that the I mean, what is the certification that we just received? Historic. The history. National Register of Historic and then the, Places designation. And then the first thing we're going to do is tear down one of the major contributing factors to that. So obviously, I mean, there's been some serious consideration into you know, being able to use that building or not being able, could you just expand on that a little bit more? We, we've actually, we started four or five years ago, actually looked at plans, we've owned that building seven years, looked at plans to try to put all three together. Problem with that is floor heights are different as you go down that alley, it's a step down effect. We can't actually line up any of the floor heights. Um, and I did bring to the, uh, the preservation group, literally the, the basements are the old stone limestone, part of it's cinder block, part of it's brick. Uh, the, and, and actually the floor joist in the building we're looking at tearing down was notched into the, the footings on the decor furniture building. So it doesn't even have its own supporting wall of the basement. So, I mean, cost effectiveness, there's no way we can, if, if we want to expand and at that location, there's no way we can save that and still get in footings to support the, the new building. I mean, that was one consideration. The other consideration is trying to match up the front of that with, with a building that we're building new, which um, we didn't think would work either. And, and I told the preservation group, you know, we looked at, uh, we'd have loved to bought Bank the West uh, building, moved down there. I uh, did that, talked about trading, but there was, that wasn't a, an option either. The other option is to move from the downtown location, build elsewhere. Uh, we, we think uh, we want to be downtown. We think it helps support business downtown. Uh, we'd like to stay there. But 
you know, we're at that point, we've, been, we've got to expand because we just have no, no room left. So we, we spent a lot of time uh, trying to come up with some uh, alternatives and it just, it just hasn't worked. Rick, I think when I had talked to you about that question too, uh, you'd looked at trying to stabilize and preserve that uh, facade, that front facade, but with no foundation underneath it, there was really no way to even maintain that, right. try right. to reuse it. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's just a typical building that uh, it's had a lot of deferred maintenance uh, for years and years. When we bought it, it, was, it already had issues in the back. The back literally is falling into the building. The, the front half, goslings have rented for the last seven years, but, you know, that's actually the roof is uh, bad. The front, uh, front leaks through the bricks. Um, so. Good questions? Yeah, Certainly Thank not. You. Thank you. It looks like a beautiful facility. Okay. There's one, uh, one recent development uh, on that that I've been talking with the architect about um, in the last just a few days, last Thursday or Friday. Some of the things that Rick talked about in terms of being able to match the sides along the right-of-way line um, because of the, the way the foundations are underneath the sidewalk. Um, they're not going to be able to line that building up, even the new building up, with the decor furniture building. And so we need to better understand what that means or what their footing plan will look like. Uh, but it's probable that we will need an easement to grant them uh, use of the right of way for their footings to be able to get the buildings so they line up. And what that means basically is that their footings would encroach into the right of way under the sidewalk 12 to 18 inches. And so we're working on developing an easement agreement so that you can consider that as well. And so this is something you wouldn't see. It would be you wouldn't see it, right. Not but it just helps the building line, line up better and speaks to how they're so different with their foundations being constructed the way they were 100 and whatever years ago. And so we'll bring that to you in, in a different action. Great council decision here. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the site plan and the C3 design uh, for Viking State Bank at 321 West Water. Okay, yes. motion Second. by, by Rista and seconded by uh, Lohr. Any other questions? Roll call. Rustad? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bell Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Okay, approved. Move down to uh, conducting a public hearing on the uh, plan specifications, form, and contract, and consideration of bids for the Court Street, Street uh, Retaining Wall Project. Uh, uh, you had uh, bids on this, and Lindsay, you report on the bids. Yeah, we had uh, one bidder, and the bid is $85,519.54 from Skyline Construction. Our estimate was $80,344. And uh, I would say the project is fairly unique, and so I think that the difference we don't feel too badly about. It's a difficult project for, on our end to estimate just exactly how this wall is going to fit into that site versus the cost of the wall itself. The wall, for those, maybe this is the first time you're hearing of this or that we haven't talked about this maybe extensively, is a big, large uh, uh, block wall, similar in appearance to what you see on the trail if you're on the Middle Calmer Road where the trail goes underneath the Middle Calmer Road. On each side, we've used the same style, large block. And uh, basically the reason for the large block approach is that it doesn't require as much excavation behind the wall and it doesn't require the same tieback system that the smaller blocks cost uh, would, would require. Um, but I, I would say the bid, I think, is appropriate for what we're trying to do and we would recommend acceptance. Any public comment in regard to uh, this uh, contract? Any public comment? Seeing none, we'll move uh, beyond the public and close the public hearing and have the council consider resolution 2833, approving the plans and specifications form a contract accepting the bid for the Court Street or training uh, wall project for the $85,518.54. They are so approved. 
Okay, motion by Lohr. Supported? Second. By Carlson. Questions? Um, I have a question. Since we're talking about sidewalks recently, is there no proposed sidewalk then on, on that side of the street? That would be the way we would continue, yeah. And primarily it's, even if this project had a way to solve that space-wise, below there it's a very steep bank and we'd have to build some additional retaining walls and things that we're hoping to avoid, I guess. So um, it would be status quo from a sidewalk standpoint. This would be one of those areas where we might just have to wave a sidewalk. Huh? You might just have to wave a sidewalk on that side of the street, right? I wish I had room for it. Make the wall easier to do too. <laughs> Anything else? Roll call. Lohr? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Rustad? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bell Richard? Aye. Okay, resolution approved. Item 9 is consider resolution 2835 setting a public hearing with plan specification and estimating our costs and setting a bid date for the Doug Road Trail section of Trout Run Trail Improvement uh, Project uh, for uh, November 6th. And some background here, some FEMA potential. So there's, uh, I think several of us have kind of been working on this. I think Andy has some information. Lindsay's been working on this probably since last August. Um, while the resolution uh, is fairly simple and straightforward, setting a date for a public hearing and uh, putting into effect the uh, possible bid date of November 2nd, Lindsay, I think? That's Thursday. Sixth. Thursday would be the bid date. Oh, the bid date. Yeah, sixth, Thursday or sixth would Friday be the I'll public check. hearing. Right. It's either Thursday or Friday, we might have. So second or third on bid date. Um, we, we thought that um, because of the scope of this project, uh, the dollars involved in working with FEMA that we ought to have a conversation with council to get some input on uh, moving forward with this. Um, well, I listed uh, several options. Um, the first one, do nothing, really probably is not that viable, um, especially considering our working relationship with FEMA um, and how they may perceive that action if that were chosen. Um, also, just given how much that trail is used and beloved by the community, it's really not a viable option. To list it there, not in jest, but it is something to consider, I guess. But um, so, I, so I, w I guess I'd turn it over to Lindsay to see if he has any other comments in terms of constructability. Uh, as I mentioned, we did uh, work quite extensively with FEMA and have a soil report that speaks to the conditions of the soil there. Armed with that information, Lindsay and FEMA's uh, engineers did develop a plan for repair, and that's ultimately what's in front of you is, is how that area would be, would be stabilized. I, I would say, and you've heard me maybe cover a little of this in the past, but essentially we've been going back and forth trying to decide what the appropriate repair would be. This proposed project is the project that would regrade, so remove the soils that are sliding and replace them with a system of soils that would be reinforced by a fabric layered almost like a retaining wall. Uh, and this comes from the, the soils rec uh, recommendations from the report that was done as a result of the investigation that FEMA asked for uh, here last summer. And we've been working through this with FEMA trying to make sure we understood the participation uh, so we knew initially quite a bit of this was not going to be eligible without the soil report and as a result of the soil report findings, the majority of the work would be FEMA eligible items. And uh, exceptions to that would be if we widen the trail surface, which we are proposing to do, we'd like to get to a 10 foot trail through that corridor because of the high volume of use and because this would be redone, uh, we would prepare things with that in mind. Uh, we also have, um, I think, for example, the, the idea that uh, if there are opportunities like this, we'd put conduit in the ground for future uh, fiber or other type things that might use this corridor. But beyond that, FEMA would have a percentage participation along with the state that, um, that allows us to at least feel like we know what our local participation will look like. This is not a contract to pave the trail. This is just to redo the earthwork part of things. 
and the paving would follow in 2018, hopefully, perhaps 2019, <coughs> depending on our discussions, but we also are trying to fall within FEMA's timelines. So we want to maintain our eligibility by doing things within the timelines or asking for extensions if they're available. Um, so this particular project this evening to do the grading and the restoration with the, with the layered reinforced soils is about a $259,000 project. And FEMA's participation in that will be not pure 75%, but it's based on 75% for the majority of those items. And then you have another 10% that's local. I mean, that's state. So your local percentage here is 15% plus whatever your ineligible items would be. And then I think through the discussion we've had through, and I haven't been to Park and Rec yet, but we've been to the 28E group and talked about this. We have a problem also on the other end and the idea that we have no way to get to the middle without going through something that is not construction traffic friendly uh, has been a problem. Could be a problem if we had other between the two. So getting this repaired and put back together in a way that we're comfortable coming from the west end, particularly once the Oneota Drive bridge is replaced, uh, I think really does make this a much more maintainable section of trail. To this point, we've been limited by whatever we could put in that corridor. And you know, almost everybody's been out of that curve. Some parts are better than others, some parts are more than others, some parts we struggle with maintenance a little more than others just because of the terrain and the spot. We do look at this like a step in the right direction for the future of that segment. So the 500,000, Lindsay, is the soil work and paving? There's a, there's a, yes, there's a big picture number that includes uh, the soil work, the paving, our work, the preliminary work, the, the FEMA work that's been done you know, on this that's eligible to date, so the preliminary engineering and that type of thing. Uh, and I would say tonight that the 500 looks like that's going to be strong. So we would hope to be less than that by the time we got through everything. As a result of this final design, we're able to refine our numbers a little better. And the paving project being considered is 10 foot wide. 10 foot wide and uh, approximately the same length as what you see from the ravine to the forty park. There's discussion then about whether or not the trail, which was paved in the early, or I'm sorry, the late 80s, is ready anyway for another layer of asphalt over the rest of it. And that's a discussion we'll do over the winter to try to decide what's the, what's the right paving project in the spring. Uh, so that's when we go in there to the resurface. More already, maybe it will be more if the funding is right. But it is a section of trail that has reached a maturity that we will normally be looking at some, some new asphalt on that at some point. And, and some concern with just construction traffic in and out of that area too might lend itself to that conversation as to how much we pay. We, we'd like to think this, I, I don't think there's any question, this section will be robust enough to get from A to B to where you get to the rest of the trail and then uh, we're fortunate enough the majority of the rest of the trail isn't kind of hanging over the river. But our other hanging over the river spot did some sliding last summer and so that is a spot that we have to do some rejuvenation there too. Not to this degree, but, uh, and I think maybe not to this, the same degree if we have this end as an option to get both ways in. And that would be where the snow fencing is now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that we've lost the slope and not the construction, but it's, there's not enough need left there to run trucks back and forth over that regardless. So uh, we'll be looking at that as a second. And the anticipation is that uh, if we go through with this, that they'd be doing that this winter? We, we want to give them the opportunity. We're obviously at the mercy of whatever the weather turns out to, to do here in November and December. But there are definite advantages uh, to doing it late season. One, the campground, uh, we have to run a bypass route around the bridge because the bridge is load limited. And so that route will go through the south campground. Well, we can do that now without campers uh, when we get to this point. And that's one consideration. The other is that the water levels in the cut, except for the last week, I guess, would normally be favorable this time of year, and we would hope to not have the flood risk issues of crossing the stream. And we would still hope that. 
It is a difficult site to get into in the spring because spring comes late for that north side. So uh, we're hopeful that we will be able to do this and get as much done as we can. It, it is entirely possible they can get this opened up and we would get our you know, Thanksgiving blizzard or something and it can remain closed with a big hole there for the rest of the winter until we get appropriate weather. Yeah. Okay. Wait, Councilor, want to move on this, sir? I move resolution 2835. Okay, Lewis made the motion for approval of this public hearing. Second. And second by Rista. Any other concerns, questions? Just in terms of the three points there, I think the city does consider paving pillar to pillar. Number three. You want to comment on that at all, or uh, paving the whole thing? Maybe just a little bit. Uh, I think the battery is on dead in there. So, um, you know, the 2080 committee um, had some interest in at least exploring that for sure. You know, we got a little bit of time over the winter, and some of them think there might be some community members interested in participating with that. Uh, make sure that. Um, that right now we're supposed to kind of shortcut it at all. So that gives a little time to see if those opportunities are there. One other aspect on that, just to, to add a comment to what Andy's tried to do over the last several years when the trail opened, 2012, um, Lindsay provided some, some data as to the, the age and longevity of each section of the trail all the way around. And so Andy and, and Wanda have worked really hard to try to set aside reserve funds from Hotel Motel in anticipation of re repairs as each section ages out. And as Lindsay said, this section is one of the oldest sections. I know Andy shares thoughts with the park board that we need to really take care of what we have. We need to keep it in good shape. We need to continue to, to make repairs when necessary. Maybe this repair came along a little earlier than we wanted, but I also think we're prepared to, to do the whole thing when this project's done and you know really take care of what we have on this section. This is one of our most important and popular sections of the trail too. So. Okay, any other questions? If not, ready to move? For a roll call? Luce? Aye. Rustad? Aye. Lore? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bell Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Okay, that resolution carried. Item 10 has considered sending a letter to Alliant uh, Energy regarding the AMI uh, metering. Uh, this is a letter, I think, uh, developed uh, from uh, the core of power. I guess first I'd like to have a comment from our city engineer in regard to this letter. I mean, city attorney, in regard to this letter and uh, any comments from Chad for your discussion. So, our city attorney. I've had a chance to review the letter, and, and my comment would be simply that uh, Alliance franchise is in existence up until May of 2018. You've, you've taken action to establish a moratorium. But the moratorium is based on what the city is going to do with whether or not you're going to proceed with renewing that franchise or whatever. Um, which means in the meantime, Alliant has authority under their franchise to continue doing their business. What you're, as long as everyone understands what, you know, that what you're asking in here is a request, right. that's fine. Uh, how and, and if and however Alliant wants to respond is up to Alliant. Um, and if they come back and ignore you, then there's, you have your answer. There's not much more that you can do. Uh, but subject to that, I don't know, I see what, what the letter is asking. Um, they, Alliant has more hoops to jump with through the Iowa Utilities Board than they do with us. Because our franchise basically, and simply, if you want to oversimplify it, allows them to use the public right of way, basically. Uh, so, I mean, they can operate under that until their franchise expires in May. I did have a follow-up conversation uh, with Brad Morgan with Alliant, and he's more than willing to sit down uh, with City 
officials or leadership and review their smart metering deployment plan um, as stated in the third paragraph here um, with specific information. He's, he's very happy to share that information and would do so uh, even without this letter. Um, but he it had indicated that their deployment of AMI meters uh, throughout Iowa, Northeast Iowa specifically, has already begun um, with deployment in Owyn, Manchester, Dubuque, and other areas. Um, and I think he indicated that Decora was somewhere early next year, uh, and that they, you know, were not going to they were not going to stop that rollout that already started the program, been in development for a couple of years already. So. Um, I will meet with him uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks and um, learn what I can as far as what the meters mean uh, and how they'll help them in the future. Okay, I guess you have a, a letter and uh, I guess the question is whether or not you want to consider sending this letter. I would move we send the letter with the edit that it be October 30th instead of September 30th. The understanding that this is just simply a request to know what their plans are, and uh, I think it's great, Chad. You've been talking to them, and they're expressed that. I think this just puts us on note that we really sincerely want them to consider that we're in the middle of something. So it's just a part of the communication between them and us, I think. So that's why I would move it as a request. Okay, there's, there's a motion by Luce to proceed with the letter. Is there support for that motion? I'll second it. Okay, second by Johnson. Now we're open for discussion. Are we going to ask them to, um, are we going to ask them to postpone any other potential upgrades and uh, uh, of their system, like potentially new, new poles, new, uh, new um, wires throughout the city? If you choose to. Power lines. You can bring another letter if you want. That's not what this is about at all. Well, I'm, just, I'm concerned that we're asking them to, uh, you know, they're, they're making an investment. And they know what's going on. But they're still making an investment into the city of Decorah, which I think is a positive. Well, I think they're a substantial player in our community, yes. I would agree. Uh, Steve, I have a question because you followed this closer than I have. This is all an improvement and better efficiency in that type of meter reading, I'm guessing. So <clears throat> should we not allow the improvements to take place? And if we do, if nothing happens, it means it delays. How, how long would you anticipate uh, a delay if uh, we do send this uh, letter? I don't think we're asking for a delay. I think. I know. You aren't. We're just asking for information. We, the thing with the utility might never happen. So, uh, even considering uh, asking them not to install, to put in new new metering, uh, I'm not sure I'd be willing to. Even even if we do something down the road, we'd like to have that new meter. The letter's not asking for them to stop, they're just asking for information regarding the deployment of the smart metering. It does ask in the in the third paragraph, the last sentence, request the defer installation mm -hmm. within the core <coughs> area until after the issue of municipalization has been resolved. Which if what the city manager stated of his timeline is correct, they might well be right within the same time frame anyway. So it's not really uh, shoving them aside at all. It's just letting them know our desire of finishing up our feasibility on the municipalization, the municipalization before such would happen. Because that gives us a sense of whether or not it's feasible, where we're headed. Other discussion? I think based on the information that Chad has given us regarding his conversation with Brad, is it? Yes. Um, I personally would be in favor of holding off um, this letter until after that meeting, um, waiting to hear back from, from Chad on what takes place with that meeting and then moving forward from there. I agree with you on that. I'd like to stay because, like I said, um, 
Yeah, this is an improvement. I, like Gary mentioned, there's other improvements they need to do to maintain their line if we don't do anything. So I'd hate to even, they can get the information back to us, but that shouldn't determine whether we have a utility company or not. And when would we anticipate those results of that conversation? Uh, he and I, Brad and I talked last week, so, uh, you know, we'll set something up here in the next couple of weeks. Knowing that I'm gone next week, but we'll, we'll meet sooner rather than later. We have a motion on the table. Any more discussion? So I just think it's important that we put this out and forward so they know what we're about and what we're thinking and what we're designing. Okay, any other discussion? Seeing none, we're ready for a roll call on that motion, which uh, suggests that we send Which the, the motion is to send the letter with a date of October 30. Right. And motion by Luce and second by Johnson, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Rustad? No. Lore? No. Chisel? No. Bell Richard? No. Carlson? No. Motion fails. <coughs> I'll move on to the... Uh, Next uh, agenda item, which is consider ordinance 1210, an ordinance amending section 2.14 fire department under title two of the code of ordinance of the city of the core of the second reading. I move the second reading. Okay, motion by Luce for second reading. Second. Supported by Bella Richard. Any questions, comments, roll call? Luce? Aye. Bell Richard? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Lore? No. Rustad? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Okay, carried one descending vote. Uh, consider ordinance uh, 1211, an ordinance amending section 2.18 uh, city manager under title two of the code of ordinance of the city of Decorah, second reading. Section 2.48. Excuse me, I'm not sure what I said, but it's 2.48. <laughs> And move for approval of the second reading. Second. Okay, motion by Sizzle, seconded by Luce. Any comments? Roll call. Chisel? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Rustad? Aye. Lohr? No. Bell Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Okay, motion carried, one descending vote. Uh, consider ordinance 1212 amending chapter 1.24 uh, general penalty of the Decorah Municipal Code by uh, re-specifying misdemeanor penalties. This will be the first reading and uh, Chad, a little explanation of something that's been on the books, I guess. Yeah, actually this one's probably more, more for Rick, but uh, Senate file 374 passed in the last uh, legislative session actually changes some language based on a uh, Supreme Court decision in 2015 uh, to remove the possibility of imprisonment for municipal infractions. So this ordinance uh, just merely cleans up section 1.24, general pen penalties uh, in the municipal code for misdemeanor, misdemeanor penalties. Just clean up language. I motion to approve ordinance 1212. Okay, motion by Bill Richard. Second. And second by Carlson. Questions? Roll call. Bill Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Rustad? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Okay, Gary, is there any desire to dispense with yeah. the second? I'll motion to waive the second and third readings and adopt. Okay, there's been a motion by Bill Richard. Short. Sure. To dispense with the second and third reading of this ordinance and adopt the ordinance 1212. Um, let's see. Second, Carlson. It was second by Carlson. Any questions about that? Roll call. <coughs> Bell Richard? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Rustad? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Okay, that ordinance change has been accepted. We're down to reports, city manager. <clears throat> uh, just a couple of things, Mayor. Uh, one, I will be out of the office next week. As I mentioned, I'll be attending uh, my first International City Managers Conference in San Antonio. Um, capstone uh, for uh, my certified city manager 
uh, designation. I've been working on that for a while, so um, that'll be next week, uh, all week. Uh, we have a position open or will be opening soon on the Board of Adjustment. Uh, John Molers is retiring after many, many, many years on the Board of Adjustment, so um, we'll need a reappointment there by January of some time, so if you could be thinking of that or just uh, let the public know that uh, applications are uh, available for that. And a reminder that on November 6th, your next council meeting at 4.30, you'll have a review of the uh, Upper Explorer Land Regional Planning Commission and WCDI's housing study. That will be a final report out of that on November 6th. Thank you. Any reports from departments? Just mention that last week wasn't real productive, but we do hope to get our asphalt work going this week. Tomorrow we should be on State Street and a couple of the other streets. Um, they are a little behind because of the weather, but we're trying to get them in there and get some of these done. It's been a little longer gap than what we are uh, encouraging, or we've been complaining, but we're finally getting them done. We have a little bit of corrective work to do in the base on one side of State Street, but we can still expect that to be well. Get those down. The alleys were, three of the alleys were prepared last week. We have some curb work to do, but we're making progress. Just a week, uh, whole week like this. We need another one next week. Okay. Anything else back there? Um, the campground will be closing uh, this Sunday. Uh, well, two Sundays, October 29th, before our next council meeting. So uh, it's been a great season out there. It's been through this fall. Last couple weekends been wet and rainy and still full of campers, so it's going strong. Um, this is the new September now, I guess. So, but, uh, that and then also this Saturday, there's uh, some music at the Cora Elks Club, and the Elks has offered to take a free will donation and give it to our G2G programming. G2G is get together, and that's uh, a new programming that we're doing for adults with special needs. And so I've been putting a little information together for that. We have, in uh, three or four years, we've gotten it going to serve over 130 adults with special needs. Um, with a special events program, it's been uh, a lot of fun and very rewarding. So that's this Saturday evening at the Elks. And, uh, how about your touch a truck? Yeah, I mean, well, um, I haven't heard the final numbers, but uh, we have done it for three years. It was two Saturdays ago, and a uh, great crowd, and uh, it's a very popular event. Thanks to a lot of the local businesses that participated in brought equipment down here and let kids climb on it and enjoy it. It's great. Other reports? Please report that we got a few new uh, LED bulbs to replace the ones that were faulty that were originally installed. The vast majority of our project was great. We've really enjoyed our life, but there were just a couple of hot fire bulbs um, and some of our historic light fixtures that we have some trouble with. But couple no longer. Um, nice and bright lighting over there in the library. Everything's back up and running. And we started a nice big deep cleaning project. So we're looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Council members? Nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a heads up, I think after the November 2nd, 6th, we were talking about doing economic development, community better written meeting, potentially talking about housing, uh, tax abatements, since the study will be before and we'll have that fresh in our minds. Nothing this time, Mayor. I want to give a call out to the individuals in the community that supported and those who helped put together the Girls Who Code program, a very successful way of bringing young women into dealing with coding computers, not just playing on them, but figuring out how to make them work. And that's a gender that had increased quite a bit, but lately has diminished in percentage of participation in the engineering and coding 
So this is a program to help young girls in the community get involved in that and have fun with that and learn about that. It's a wonderful program. No mayor. Adam Mayor. Any others? How about Luther? Um, so yeah, just a couple quick updates on uh, on the research I've been doing regarding the street lights um, on College Drive. Um, I talked with the Campus Betterment Committee again. Uh, they ran into a bit of a snafu with the uh, with uh, campus facilities and campus security over whether or not they had access to certain information. Um, they after like a week or so, they finally uh, got the approval to get access to this information. Um, and because most of the students are on fall break right now, um, they won't be getting that information, they said, by next week or something like that. And then uh, in terms of uh, getting a uh, poll going on Luther College about uh, whether or not students, whether or not street lights is an issue that the majority of students on campus feel like need to be addressed. Um, there is a political science senior seminar that will that has a focus on polling that will release a poll and have all the information they said by the beginning of next month. So uh, I'll be waiting to hear information from both groups, and I'll bring it before all you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next meeting, uh, of course, will be on old time, I guess. Uh, old time. <laughs> and make sure you vote because the next day is the election. So we'll have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Meeting is adjourned.